Seronegative spondyloarthropathies. Why are they called that? Because seronegative, the lab test will be negative. And spondylo usually affects the spine. So there's a lot of them, a lot of them. Uh, psoriatic arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, reactive arthritis, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, or what is called Stills disease in adults. How often are you going to encounter this stuff? I don't know. I never encounter it. So it's really good for test taking and keeping it on the differential, but either I'm missing it a lot because it's a difficult diagnosis or it's just not that common. So if a patient walks in and they have one of these, what are they going to look like? Well, they're probably going to be in pain uh, is basically all I can tell you. When you sit down and take a history with these guys, what are they going to tell you? It's going to be usually a male. They're going to tell you that they have pain in their back mostly in their fingers and their toes maybe. So if it is a young man with pain in his lower back or his sacrum, maybe you will think of ankylosing spondylitis, less likely than just acute low back pain, but good to keep it in mind. So your classic reactive arthritis is the can't see, can't pee, can't climb a tree. So they have a uveitis, they uh, can't pee because they have some kind of GU infection and they can't climb the tree because of the arthritis or the uh, pain in their fingers. That's reactive arthritis. So ask about family history because in these seronegative spondyloarthropathies, there is a strong family history of them and they may know whether or not they're at risk for this. Classically, it's an HLA B27 uh, gene uh, that they carry that will make them predisposed to some of these conditions. If they give you a history of a salmon-colored rash, think juvenile arthritis or Stills disease. Also, that comes along with some fevers that are kind of nonspecific and some lymph node involvement. Maybe they say they have some painful or enlarged lymph nodes. And then if they're coming in and telling you that they have these pains and a history of psoriasis, well, that one's easy. You just think of psoriatic arthritis. Physical exam, when you perform this, uh, you're going to look for range of motion in the spine, uh, focus on the lower back, focus on the pelvis, see if there's pain with uh, passive rotations. Psoriatic arthritis is going to have some nail pitting and what's uh, classically known as sausage digits or just like big fingers. And obviously you can look for those classic psoriatic plaques on the patients. And then on the abdominal exam, hepatosplenomegaly is classically associated with juvenile arthritis or Stills disease. So when you do labs, you will get a rheumatoid factor. And guess what? Seronegative. So the RF factor will be negative. For that hepatosplenomegaly differential, juvenile arthritis and Stills disease, you want to get a hepatic function. And also know that the ferritin, which is uh, the iron stores, will be high in both of those. And then finally, you can get a nonspecific inflammatory marker like a erythrocyte sedimentation rate or an ESR. So the rheumatoid factor will be negative for that hepatosplenomegaly and juvenile arthritis and uh, Stills disease. You want to check the liver enzymes and get the ESR and see if it's elevated. So now for imaging. Well, the psoriatic arthritic patient is going to have a classic pencil in cup x-ray finding on their fingers, kind of like the bone sitting in a cup. Ankylosing spondylitis, that's going to have a bamboo appearance to the spine. It's going to look fused in the lumbar area. But know that sometimes an MRI might be more useful because it'll show the signs prior to x-rays. It's thought that the protein that the HLA B27 gene produces um, is similar to some kind of pathological protein out there. And so sometimes the body will develop an autoimmune response to this protein, thinking that it's foreign. And that's how you get some of these seronegative spondyloarthropathies. To treat these spondyloarthropathies, you're going to give NSAIDs and not steroids.